Hey there, my name is Shirley. I'm currently a first year medical student, actually about to finish my first year. And as you can tell from the title of this video, when I applied, I did not have the best stats. So for my MCAS application, which is the one used to apply to MD schools, my science GPA was a 3.16, my cumulative GPA was a 3.34. For the ACOMAS application, which is the one used to apply to DO schools, my science GPA was a 3.38 because math is not included in the science component of the ACOMAS calculation for your GPA. And I did really bad in math. So it went up significantly from my MPAS application. And then for my cumulative GPA, I got a 3.35 for my ACOMAS application. So as you can tell, my GPA was not very good, especially when you take into account that the national average for med school matriculants in terms of GPA is around a 3.7. That meant that I had to have a pretty decent MCAT. And after about five or so months of studying, I did manage to pull off a 5.12 which is around 85th percentile. The national average for med school matriculants in terms of MCAT score is around a 510 or 511, so I was a little above that. However, for the school that I'm currently attending, the average score for matriculants is actually 513. So in terms of both my MCAT and my GPA, my stats were below average for the school that I got accepted into. All that to say that obviously academics are very important and they make up a huge component of your application. However, they are not the end-all be-all and this video will dive into some things you can do to strengthen your application if you do happen to have a low GPA. As you can see, I got a D in calculus. I retook it and got a C minus. I then continue the series for math and I got another C minus. And obviously this wasn't great, but in a sense it kind of worked out in the end because it helped me narrow down the list of schools I could apply to because I couldn't apply to any that required math as a prerequisite as a C- minus does not count as passing. So I guess it all worked out. A couple of these other C's were kind of inane in terms of the reason that I got them. For example, in my writing fiction course, I got a C because I had some sort of misunderstanding in regards to the specifications of when and how to turn in my final project. So I got an F on that and I was a bit bummed because I had an A in the class up until that point. Um, so it could have been easily prevented. So yeah, not my best shining moment. For the class titled Practicum in Teaching and Learning, I got an NP, which stands for no pass because I signed up for the course in the beginning of the quarter. And for some reason or another, I decided I didn't want to continue with the course and I thought I had dropped it, but at the end when I was looking at all of my grades right before finals week, I realized that I was still enrolled in the course and that I'd been enrolled this entire quarter as a student who had not attended any of the classes or done any of the work. So I did not pass that class because I was not aware that I was enrolled and I thought I had dropped it, unfortunately. And then I got a W in my general chemistry lab also for a pretty silly reason. I was skateboarding and I fell and I kind of got a black eye, which really emphasized to me the importance of helmets. And it hurt to put my goggles on, so I wasn't able to wear them during lab, which is required because of the experiments that are conducted. So I had to take a W for that class. The rest of my grades, the C's in the other courses, are essentially due to bad study habits, procrastination, or what have you. I have also never been good at math above the level of algebra, and in my second year of college, I also had a close friend take his own life, so that was a pretty rough quarter in terms of academics for me. And yeah, those are the explanations for my poor academic history. As an aside, if you do want to talk about your academic history in your personal statement or your secondaries, you want to make sure that you explain it in one or two sentences because you don't want to make it into a sob story or to make up excuses for your, why your grades weren't on par. You want to mainly focus on the part where you improved, the part where you improved your study habits because that's the part that they really care about. They want to see that you've grown as a person and as a student. So moving on, what can you do if you have a low GPA? One of the most important factors, and this may not apply to all of you depending on where you are personally in the medical school journey, um, is to have an upward trend. As you can see in the screenshot that I've posted of my AMCAS application, I started off with pretty much a 3.0 GPA in my freshman year, 
that dropped in my second year, but I showed improvement during the last half of college and was able to obtain a 4.0 in my post back studies. Obviously, ideally, you would have a 3.7 plus GPA throughout your academic history. However, that can be very hard to achieve. So if you have two applicants with a low GPA, but one of them started off really poorly, but was able to improve and subsequently obtain a upward trend, as opposed to an applicant who started off really well, but wasn't able to maintain that progress, and subsequently received a downward trend in terms of their academic history, then it's gonna look a lot better for the first applicant because that upward trend shows growth. And it's also more understandable to be struggling as a freshman when you're getting adjusted to a college environment or any sort of new environment, as opposed to when you're a senior in your fourth year who already has experience and who should hopefully know how to study by that point. Another factor is to look into post back programs, especially for those of you who have already graduated and aren't really Really able to change any trends in your academic history. So the three programs I know of are the formal post -bac program, um, the informal, also known as the DIY post -bac program, and then the special master's program, also known as an SMP. I will be going over details of these programs in another video, um, but in this video I just want to let you know that I personally chose to do a DIY post -bac program, which is essentially me taking and retaking classes at a community college to improve my GPA. Here's a list of the following classes that I either took or retook after graduation. As you can see, I got A's in all of these courses. There is some mixed information regarding whether it is advised to retake classes, and I'm seeing that taking new classes may be better than retaking classes because doing well in a class you've already taken isn't as impressive as doing well in a class with information you've never seen. But either way, regardless of whether you're taking new classes or retaking classes, you wanna make sure that you get A's in all of your post back programs if possible to dedicate all the necessary time and effort because this is pretty much the last chance you have before applying to med school to improve your GPA, so you gotta really make it count. Alright, so moving on to the MCAT. As you can see, I only did really well in CARS. I will be making a video on that sometime in the future. The rest of my MCAT score, especially my Kevin Bio, were not as great. I think most people tend to hardcore study for two to three months, but I had to work full time. I also had a part-time job and I was retaking some classes as part of my DIY post -bac. so I spent around five months studying, mainly on the weekends. I personally used Kaplan books to study because my friend was finished with his and he was willing to give them to me for free, so those were the resources that I had on hand. I personally did enjoy using them, but I don't have any specific preferences for any MCAT study resources other than UWorld, which I highly, highly, highly recommend to everyone. Um, studying for the MCAT is essentially a question bank that gives you answers and questions that are very similar to the actual MCAT. So it's fantastic for practicing and it's also a great assessment tool to give you a rough idea of how well you would score on the actual MCAT. And I'm actually excited to say that I'll be able to continue the cycle. I'm obviously finished with using the MCAT books that I have. I will be heading down to San Diego sometime later this year and I'll be meeting up with a subscriber who will be taking her MCAT soon. So it's cool to know that, you know, this set of books is able to help multiple people. Moving on, I will be making a separate video going over the entirety of my MCAS and my ACOMAS application. So I'll be including details in those videos. But for this one, a general overview of my non-academic components of my med school application include 50 hours of shadowing, 500 hours of research, which did lead to one publication, although I wasn't a first author, 3,000 plus hours of clinical experience, 600 hours of shadowing, and keep in mind all these numbers are a rough estimate. I don't remember the exact numbers that I put down, but it's around there. I was also a CPR slash BLS instructor. I was a camp counselor for an organization called Muscular Dystrophy Association, which is essentially where you get paired with a camper who has muscular dystrophy and you're able to help them participate in activities that they wouldn't otherwise be able to. I was also an officer in two student organizations and I put down that I was proficient in Spanish, Mandarin, and Cantonese. I studied Spanish medical terminology in Spain and I helped translate in a free clinic in Mexico, so I put those down as part of my extracurriculars as well. All right, so those were my extracurriculars. My biggest tips are to apply early, so as soon as the application opens, you want to already have your personal statement written, your secondaries and such written from past years, and essentially have everything as aligned as possible so that you can submit as soon as possible. So apply early, apply broadly. Um, obviously, finances are going to be a barrier, 
so try to set a number where it's not exorbitant in terms of applying to like 80 schools at the same time you don't want to apply to just five um, unless you know you're fairly certain you'll get in because that decreases your chances and then lastly apply to schools that are kind of similar in terms of not only your statistics so your gpa and mcat but also the mission statement so if you have a lot of volunteering experience you want to apply to schools that are more focused on serving underserved communities versus if you have a lot of research experience obviously apply to research schools that will give you an advantage because the experience you have will align with the mission statement of the school and also because you know if you're going to be attending the school for the next four years you want to be sure that it's one that you're actually passionate about and then obviously make sure other components of your application are strong so personal statement secondaries etc I've made a couple of videos on those so feel free to check those out if you would like to following these recommendations are what I personally think helped me get in to medical school despite the fact that my academic history was not the best all right so to summarize these are the following steps that you can take to improve your application if you do not have the best GPA have an upward trend in your GPA participate in post back programs aim for an MCAT score that's at least a 510 Make sure other aspects of your application are strong, such as extracurriculars, personal statement, etc. Apply early and apply broadly. So this kind of goes back to the mission statement. If there's a specific component that the school really emphasizes, such as volunteering with underserved communities, then you want to really tailor your application, your personal statement, your secondaries, your interview to that school as much as possible, tailor it to their specific programs, their specific professors, anything that's specific to the school will definitely help you because it says, hey, I'm really interested in you specifically, and it's not like I'm casting a wide net to all the medical schools, which, you know, you are, but it looks a lot better to the admissions committee if you're showing particular interest in their specific school. All right, so that is it. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope that this video was helpful and I will see you another Sunday. Until then, I surely hope that you will take care of your health.